Hey guys, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we'll be taking a look at what is currently taking place across the North Atlantic Basin as well as uh, the possibility for us to maybe see some development as we're going to be heading into the final few days of this month going into next month. And so before I go into details... Okay, and so now we're going to be starting off with satellite view of the basin. And we're seeing here that we have some shower and thunderstorm activity in some areas. We see that small cluster right to the north of Hispaniola, as well as some shower activity within portions of the Western Caribbean in the vicinity of Central America. And we also see some shower activity taking place well off the coast of Africa, extending into the tropical Atlantic. And so things are pretty quiet in terms of tropical activity uh, as a result of the Saharan dust that has been quite dominant across the region. And in, in the month of July, uh, this is usually the peak time when we see the most concentration of dust across the area. And that dry air helps to inhibit tropical cyclone activity because things just get too hostile. Uh, tropical cyclones need moisture and so dry air is the opposite of that. Hence, it's not likely that we will see any development within uh, a very within very dry environmental conditions. However, things are likely to change as we are going to be progressing into the month of August. And so let's go ahead now and take a look at the dry air map. And so we are seeing that we have this mass of Saharan dust that is a uh, blanketing portions of the Eastern Caribbean already, bringing some hazy skies and helping to suppress rainfall activity. As I said earlier, it is an inhibiting factor when it comes on to tropical cyclone development. So we don't typically see tropical cyclone activity within the vicinity of all of this dry air, but this quantity might reduce over the next few weeks and we might have a leeway for tropical cyclone activity. Well, that is pretty likely. So let's go ahead and take a look now at what the Euro Ensemble tracks are showing and so here we have a map of that and uh, a tropical wave is expected to emerge off Africa and we have some of these members here showing that it might potentially uh, develop into something while on its way to the Caribbean and Actually, yesterday, these tracks were a little bit more south than where they are now. There was a general consensus that something could be making its way into the Caribbean and developing. But now we're seeing these tracks being a little bit more to the north. And uh, it's not a whole lot of them. But we definitely have to pay attention to what is going on out there. But tropical cyclone development will all depend on the environmental conditions at the time. We need low wind shear as well as those warm ocean waters, which are already there and a moist environment and the MJO or Madden Julian oscillation is going to be aiding in the moisture portion of conducive tropical cyclone formation conditions and so let us go ahead and briefly talk about the MJO so what is it and so the MJO you can think of it as this large pulse of activity it has two phases the enhanced phase and the suppressed phase as being shown here by this diagram from the weather channel and so the enhanced phase is where we have uh, convective activity more thunderstorm development and this would aid in tropical cyclone development so over in the western pacific when we have the enhanced phase of the MJO, that is when we will likely see activity taking place over there. While in the suppressed phase in the eastern Pacific going to the Atlantic Basin, things are pretty quiet. So the MJO propagates towards the east and so when this enhanced phase moves to the east and enters the Atlantic Basin, it is going to be resulting in more moisture across the region and so that is in turn going to help to boost tropical cyclone activity. So that is really the impact that the MJO has. During the enhanced phase of it, we have more thunderstorm development and that is a boost for tropical systems that are trying to develop. Meanwhile, in the suppressed phase, things are pretty dry and quiet as what we're seeing now across the Atlantic Basin. And so that is just a diagram. But what is there right now? So looking at these three maps here, we have our first map which depicts today. And so uh, the enhanced phase is represented by the blues, those cool colors. And uh, the yellows going to the oranges and reds, those indicate the suppressed phase of the MJO. So as we're going to be heading into week one and week two, we are expecting that uh, things are going to be more enhanced across the Atlantic Basin for us to see development. So we can definitely look out for some waves that are going to be emerging off Africa that will have better formation chances than they would now 
keeping in mind that that other conditions are favorable so once we have low wind shear as well as those warm ocean waters and then all that moisture we will definitely see something maybe try to develop and so uh, as i showed you guys earlier the euro ensemble tracks are expecting that something might develop but the other models are not really hopping onto that happening right now so we really have to wait and see what is going to eventually happen but we're going to be having these waves coming off africa and being much stronger as we approach the peak of the hurricane season and so it is typical of August for us to see increased activity and this graph here is depicting just that. The red indicates hurricanes and tropical cyclones, the yellow is just hurricanes. And so we see that going to August, especially mid to late August and going to the peak of the hurricane season, uh, we have an increase in tropical cyclone activity. So the statistical peak date for the hurricane season is September 10th, but uh, that doesn't mean that we will have development on September 10th or see some major storms. But that that is just the statistical peak when we're most likely to see tropical cyclone activity and some significant tropical cyclones at that. So things are pretty quiet now, but that is going to be changing as we are going to be heading into the month of August. Things are expected to be more conducive to enable tropical cyclone development. And so over in the Eastern Pacific, just to talk about it for a bit, uh, we had Estelle dissipating yesterday, I believe, and now we have two disturbances over there. And uh, maybe if these develop uh, they will become tropical cyclones but not looking as though they will be threats to land but because the MJO is somewhat in the enhanced phase within that region uh, we're seeing that things are more favorable for tropical cyclone activity and as I speak about that let us look at the uh, GFS ensemble tracks and when we look at this heading out to the early part of August we're seeing that the GFS tracks are expecting that we will see most uh, of the activity taking place place within the vicinity of the Eastern Pacific. Uh, they're not really expecting what uh, the Euro tracks were expecting in terms of something developing out there in the Atlantic Basin and making its way toward the Caribbean, but rather uh, they're showing that that will be the case for the Eastern Pacific, where we probably see tropical cyclone activity. But of course, guys, as I said earlier, things are quiet now as a result of all of the unfavorable conditions, all that dry air that is so dominant across the region, but things are going to be changing very soon. So again, if you're in portions uh, of the Atlantic Basin that are usually affected by tropical cyclones such as the East Coast of the US, the Gulf Coast, and the Caribbean, you definitely want to start to keep an eye out for tropical systems as you're going to be progressing into the month of August because August is a month known for producing some very dangerous systems and so guys uh please take all the necessary precautions and stay safe as best as possible during the rest of the season and of course i'm going to be keeping you updated once it is necessary and so that is really it for this update video and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be otherwise